Welcome back to the cityscape of Ravnica. You'll need all your wits about you to unravel the mystery that's been building here. Crack puzzles, collect evidence, and identify suspicious individuals in order to discover who is behind the series of grisly murders throughout the plane. Hey folks, my name is Jürgen, aka Nerd and Proud of It, and Destiny has brought you to my channel today to talk about Call of Manor and if it's worth it to buy the set and what the new things in the set you can expect from it are. The brilliant detective Alquist Proft recently announced that he has discovered the guilty party and invited everyone involved in the investigation to join him for the reveal. But which of them did it? We will go over the events so far and attempt to discover the killer before Detective Proft can unveil the truth. Yeah, folks, this actually is a bit of a new format. I react to the video Wizards of the Coast made about Carl of Manor. I think it is a bit of a confusing set, to be honest, but it may be just me. We're, we're trying to dissect everything. Yeah, you get the wordplay, don't you? Dissect murders blah 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 now um it is a set about murder it's a set about mystery and it's based on cluedo another or clue in english another hasbro brand overall to me everything is a bit confusing and that's why i want to dive into it and we're gonna definitely check out if it's worth to buy the set I'm not that triggered yet. Maybe if we go through the video and if we have a look at everything that changes. But for now, it seems a bit overwhelming to me. A lot of new mechanics, a lot of new characters. Everything kind of looks the same though. A lot of new, I don't know, uh, different settings and, and, and cards and kind of cards. Let, let's have a look at the story first. Our story began in the wake of the Phyrexian invasion. When Phyrexia attacked, most of the Ravnican guilds united to repel the assault. With Phyrexia defeated, Ravnica has been eager to get back to normal. And what better way to demonstrate that the people's spirits remain unbroken than a big shindig at Karlov Manor? Okay, folks, it takes me a lot of takes. It takes me a lot of takes. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be authentic as I'm always going to be. I wanted to do this a little more streamlined, but it is what it is. Phyrexia has been defeated and that calls for a party. And what better reason to throw a party than to actually win a war? It is very important who is actually at that party because that leads us to a lot of things down the road. And... Wizards is going to explain that to us, but we're going to have a look at the who is who first. The host of the event was Tesa Karlov, guild leader, legendary aristocrat, and scion of the powerful Karlov family. During the Phyrexian invasion, she saved many lives by supplying key intelligence about the advancing armies. And so who could begrudge her for throwing a well-deserved party? We're getting introduced to Tesa, and Tesa shows the different kinds of cards we can expect from murders at Karl of Manor. We got the regular version, then we got the Ravnica City version, and we got the Ravnica City version in serialized. And the serialized version is actually something pretty cool you all are really, really waiting for, right? Right? <laughs> Does that sarcasm come across the right way? I don't know. I'm not sure. Who else do we got? Everyone who is anyone was there, and everyone else was trying to get in. One featured guest was an old Orzov friend of Teza's, heroine Planeswalker Kaya. Since the Phyrexian defeat, Kaya has found herself back in her old stomping grounds. Reluctantly attending the party, she assessed the scene, looking for any reason to make her escape. Okay, we got Kaya attending the party as well in her normal regular version and in her borderless version. And Kaya doesn't want to be there. Everybody else wants to be there, but Kaya does not. And people, now it gets interesting. Who can we expect next? In addition to celebrating a return to normalcy, the Karlov Manor party served to cement a new status quo by hosting members of the Ravnikan Agency of Magicological Investigations. Yes, we're getting introduced to the agency, the Ravnica Agency of Magical Logical Investigations. I don't know what the fuck that is, but I hope we're gonna find out throughout the video. And if not, don't blame me, please. One of the members of the agency is rookie investigator Kellen. He is eager to follow the clues wherever they may lead him. 
The night proceeded as planned, the party's opulence drowning the recent woes of Ravnica in splendor and excess. But the festivities were interrupted when a body was found sprawled in the cloakroom on a pile of coats. It was the leader of the Simic Guild, Zagana. We get introduced to the rookie, Kellen. And Kellen is a super interesting character and he doesn't look generic at all and he doesn't look AI generated. And he also has a borderless version, so we have to like him and every detective story has to have a rookie, otherwise it's not a detective story. But we're moving towards the highlight of the evening, the negative highlight, of course. There is a murder and don't worry if you don't see Kellen throughout the video again, because either I didn't see him because everything is so generic and a big blur, or he's just not that interesting, you never know. The party was immediately awash in suspicion. As luck would have it, Alquist Proft, Ravnica's self-styled great detective, was on the scene as well, ready to investigate any clues that might have been left behind. So the drama is here. Guild leader Segana has been murdered. But we got the man on the scene, Larry Croft, and Larry is gonna solve this mystery for us because he apparently happened to be at the party. It is like an old novel, like an old detective novel. And yes, people who are enjoying this actually might enjoy this. I have to admit this. Investigate is a returning mechanic that immerses you in the feeling of being a detective and will have you digging deeper into the goings on. It enables you to create a clue token, which is a colorless artifact token that you can sacrifice in order to draw a card. A new mechanic, investigate, and investigate lets us create a token, and that token allows us to draw a card. So that's kind of a nice way of actually getting clues, because you get new cards. I think that's well done. On the other hand, we got the magnified version of certain cards, which look like they're on the magnifying glass, which I think looks okay as well. I would have loved a little more of Sherlock Holmes vibes rather than like the same blur all over again, but that's a personal thing. And we actually, next to the investigate mechanic, do have another new mechanic, which is kind of fun as well. The new disguise mechanic imbues the game with a sense of mystery. Anything could be hiding under your opponent's upturned cards. Disguise allows you to cast cards face down, hidden so no other player knows what it is. Pay three to cast this spell, and it becomes a 2-2 creature with ward two and no other abilities. You may turn it face up any time you have priority by paying its disguise cost. This happens immediately, doesn't use the stack, and can't be responded to. That 2-2 creature your opponent thought was safe to block is actually an angel, perfect to fly over for some free lifelink. This guy sounds like fun as well, at least in my opinion. You play a creature card face down for three mana, three colorless mana. It becomes a colorless artifact that has ward two. And then at any time you have priority, you can turn it face up for its disguise cost. I think that's a neat idea. I think um, it can lead to some cool situations in game. I think the big problem here is that it needlessly complicates the game again as well with a lot of things you have to pay attention to who has priority who is like there is no stack when it comes to turning the card face up you can't react to it what can i do before what can i do after to me the game is getting more and more complicated but uh, it's, uh, again there is more depth to it as well so it is a bit of a double-edged sword for me personally. I don't know what you think. Let me know in the comments. Do you like the disguise ability or do you dislike it? Cases are a new mechanic that allow you to experience the different steps as a mystery unfolds, just as a detective would. Cases are quest-like enchantments with three abilities. The top ability is always active. The middle is a condition to solve the case and the bottom a reward once you've solved it. We also got cases. Cases are a bit like sagas, I guess. And cases do have three abilities. The top ability, which is always active. The middle ability, can you call it ability? You can call it text as well. Condition, I don't know, however you want to call it. The middle ability, and that 
tells you what you need to do to solve the case and then you got the bottom ability you can activate once you solve the case. Suspect is another new mechanic which allows you to cast your well-honed detective eye at any creatures that looks like they might be up to no good. Suspected is a label that can be applied to a creature. A suspected creature has menace and can't block. Once suspected, a creature remains suspected until it leaves the battlefield or another effect causes it to no longer be suspected. To clarify that, if a creature is suspected, it has menace and it can't block. Menace means it can only be blocked by two creatures, but it can't block itself. So there are cards like the clandestine meddler here that actually give a creature suspected once it comes into play. In this case, one of your own creatures, because I, can, I, I think it's considered a good thing, but to me first it was a bit like if something is suspected it should get like a disadvantage but in this case um that yeah, it can be a disadvantage because it can't block anymore but to me more or less it is more like an advantage but there are other creatures that actually enter the battlefield and then already get suspected so they get the suspect ability and if they have the suspect ability then something else happens like the frantic scapegoat here I think, yeah, the suspect ability is the least favorite new ability of mine when it comes to murders at Carl of Manor, to be honest. Last but not least, I want to have a look at the different card treatments. And it is very interesting that certain treatments are only available in certain products. Most sought after treatments obviously are only to be found in collector booster boxes as Wizards of the Coast has done recently as well. We got the borderless treatment, looks kind of nice. And then we got the full art treatment, which looks kind of similar <laughs> as the borderless treatment, but I think uh, maybe there's a little difference there. I have a bit of difficulties to see. We got the foil edge, but those are only available in the commander deck. So I guess those are the commanders. We get the full art uh, treatment, which is only available for a couple of lands. And then uh, we also have the invisible ink treatment. Those will probably be the most sought after cards in the set. I guess there are not a lot and the cards have an invisible message on it, as you can see here on Larry Croft. It feels a bit like a gimmick, but a fun gimmick. I kind of like it. <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, again, let me know in the comments what you think about these things. Then we got the borderless. Uh, no. Oh, Jesus, I'm already getting confused. We got the showcase variants. We got different cards that are available in different variants. And one of them is the showcase variant. And we have seen that before. In the end, I think it's all very confusing. We still got a lot of different cards at different variants. I, I have the feeling they already have tuned it down a bit. Um, which is good in my book, uh, but in the end, yeah, it's, it's uh, what is available where, and they already have established the different products here under the card. So you see where you can actually pull the card. To me, it's a little bit too much. And then you thought I would forget, but I don't. Because if you stay until the end here, we're still going to talk about the play boosters a little bit. And I'm going to make a separate video about play boosters. I think that's quite interesting because it's a new thing. And as a player who likes to draft, I, of course, am curious about play boosters. A lot of explanation, as you just saw. But I don't want to pass it uh, or, yeah, don't want to uh, just ignore it until I make the video about it it's i'm not sure i have to i have to check them out so yes we, we're gonna talk about that in a bit if you like these kind of videos folks would help me if you hit the like button because then the video gets shared into the algorithm uh, it takes some time to make these videos um it, it takes you less time probably to hit the like button than it takes me to make the videos but uh, I would appreciate it very much if you 
hit the like button and maybe even subscribe. I do that not often enough to promote the channel because I think everybody who wants to be here is here, but maybe a little incentive by me asking uh, is not a bad thing. So please stick around if you like these kind of videos, folks. So thanks to all of my viewers, to all of my subs, and of course to all of my Patreons and YouTube channel members. It honestly is only possible to stay independent with your support and if i can stay independent i still can say whatever the fuck i want on this channel and i really love that because it gives me a personal freedom that i appreciate very very much the code word if you have made it to the end in the comments please leave me a yoda somewhere in your answer to the questions i asked you throughout the video then i know you actually watched the video until the end and i really really appreciate you spending time on the channel it means a lot to me honestly not just bullshit it uh yeah every every single time i make one of those videos and people actually take the time to watch it to answer to discuss uh, things about what i gave them as an opinion with me is very very um valuable to me stay healthy folks stay frosty i talk to you next time thanks a lot for listening bye bye